Check this out. In our browser, we have this simple looking network reachability test website, which when provided with a domain name or an IP address of a host, checks whether it is online or offline. As you can see, I've typed google.com here, and we have our ping results which tell us that this domain, google.com, is online. Now if we make some changes to this domain name and type any Linux command, you can see we're seeing the output of our command along with the actual results. This is called command injection, and it occurs when an app takes untrusted input, like a form field or URL parameter, and places it directly into a system command without proper validation or sanitization. The attacker can then append or replace parts of the command to execute arbitrary code on the server. Once an attacker finds a command injection, they can use it to get full remote access to the server by using reverse shells. Now if we take a look at the source code of this web page, you can see that we're storing the input from that input field in this IP variable, and then we're using this IP variable in this command variable along with the ping command. So this means that anything inside this IP variable will be passed here, and then we execute this with shell exec in our PHP, and the output will be displayed. Now as you can see, no sanitization is being used here. If a user puts something like google.com or an IP address, nothing suspicious will happen, but if along with the IP address they put a semicolon, which is a command separator in the shell, we end our ping command here, and after that we can put another command like id or a reverse shell, as I've already shown you. This is because the application is using the input data without any sanitization. There can be many other ways to find command injections. If a command separator doesn't work, we can use these or use variable assignment techniques to bypass filtering if there is any. This happens not only from an input box, a specific parameter can also lead to a command injection. For example, in this other web page, we have this parameter named target, which takes an IP address from us. This works the same as the old one, but the only difference is this parameter. We can pass our command in the parameter along with the actual input, and it will be shown on the screen. Command injection vulnerabilities are most commonly found in places where user input is passed to system level commands, especially when that input is not properly validated or sanitized. For example, a web application calling an operating system command, like the ping command in this case, or server side scripts that easily execute shell commands, not only web applications, Command injections can also occur in binaries. In binaries, they generally come from the same root cause. The program passes untrusted user input into a system command. The difference is just that the logic is compiled into machine code. I have this vulnerable binary which does the same as that website, and when we pass our command along with the actual parameter, it is executed along with the ping command. Again, this is because of the lack of input sanitization. This vulnerability is extremely dangerous, but it is rarely found these days. However, understanding the concept is very important as it is used a lot while playing Capture the Flag challenges. That's all I have for this video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel, as I often post content like this here.